Hey, bit. <laughs> I don't know how you can see that on the other camera, but I guess this will serve as a good intro. Welcome back. Today we are talking all about live scope. Whoa, settings. And there we have little walleye. Uh, you can see that fish moving through on the side there. So today I'm talking all about my settings for my live scope. Um, this is the LVS 34, the live scope plus. And so I'm going to kind of show you what I do from lake to lake to dial in the best settings for the best picture that I have experienced. So I'm going to dive right in here and just go on to the main screen right now. I am on the forward mode. I'm not in down mode. Um, sometimes I will go down mode during the ice season, but in the open water season, I pretty much always have it in forward mode and just zoom in and out. And one of the first things I noticed with the LVS 34 was much better distance. You know, with the LVS 32, I was getting anywhere from about 60 to 90 feet. Um, once it got past 60, it would get a little bit murky and uh, I would rarely get a very clear picture out to 90 feet. But with the LVS 34, you can see, I am getting a much better reading, especially as I up my game. I'm getting a much better reading, sometimes even out to 100 and depending on the bottom that I'm looking for 140 feet so you can see out there I'm getting clearly 100 you can see a school of fish moving around right there 100 110 120 and even sometimes out to 140 so that distance has been huge that has been um, one of the biggest differences that I have noticed in the LVS 32 compared to the LVS 34. And really one of the things that kind of sold me on it when I was out with a buddy and saw that is that target separation and that further distance is much more improved. It does look like we have a fish cruising in here. You can start to see how I'm getting a little bit of more grain on the screen. So I'm gonna drop down that gain just a little bit OP turned around. We're gonna start right in on your main screen. Again, this is in forward mode. As I go into menu, you can see some maybe tool bees um, or maybe some panfish kind of cruising through. But on your main screen, you go to menu, starting with the gain. Gain is something that I fluctuate depending on the body of water that I'm on and depending on the depth that I'm on. Right now I'm on about 70%. You can see when I go down, some of that fuzz on the screen goes down, but also some of the clarity on the picture on your jigs on your fish all of that will also go down as i go up you get a little more information but it gets a little bit fuzzier on the screen you can see some fish kind of cruising right on bottom over there um, and those pick up a little more clearly but as i go down you can see some of those fish like right there and right there are a little bit trickier to see so i like to start to find where i am just starting to get a little bit of some fuzz on the screen like that um, you can see there as i go up you get a little more information and just gives you a little bit better detail but it takes a little bit more practice to getting used to differentiating between the fish your baits all of that that's on the screen because it's just giving you a little bit more information. So starting with gain, I'm typically anywhere between 50 to 70, 75%, depending on my depth. The shallower I am, the less gain that I use, the deeper that I am, the more gain that I use. So going on from there, we have our depth range. Sometimes I'll set that to auto, sometimes I'll set it uh, my own manually, but again, that is also on the front screen here as well as um, your gain. So those are both in that setting right on the main screen forward range same thing that is on the main screen right here but it's also on your side buttons if you want to go in and out or zoom in and out there and when i'm scouting a lot of times it will be at that 60 80 90 100 feet and then when i'm fishing a lot of times i'll be in that 25 to about 40 feet you can see i'm about 40 50 feet right here i can actually zoom that in a little bit more if i want a little bit more detail and you can actually see a few fish cruising in right on bottom those ones are likely some walleyes being there so tight to bottom. And some of those other ones might be um, panfish or ciscos. Moving on from there, this again just stops the sonar if you would like it, which also um, happens if you just touch the screen. So if I touch the screen right there, it'll pause it, press play down in the corner. Sonar, whether you want to stop this transmission or not, you can see transmission disabled. Sonar setup. So now this is where the bulk of your settings are going to be. You go up into here, there's appearance, and there's a fish cruising through. You can just barely see that one. He's a little bit on the outside of the cone. 
Same thing with my jig. There's actually a little bit of stitching right there as well, um, which I'm not going to go into detail a lot, but it's just a little bit of these kind of little bit areas that are a little more dead zone type because of how the transducers are stitched together to give you that picture. But going into appearance right up here, you have different color schemes. So now there's a couple different color schemes that I like. You can see some more fish kind of cruising on bottom there. And the two, three that I mainly like, I like blue a lot because you can really kind of tell the size of the fish and also get some more 3D image out of it. Uh, but the other ones that I also really like are the moss. You can see there, that one gives you some pretty good definition as far as how big the fish are, how close they are, if they're inside or outside the cone based on how intense that green is. Um, that one, and then very similar to that one is the black emerald, which is right here. And you can see that one actually has a little more fuzz going on um, on the screen, a little bit more showing up in the background. But my favorite one so far has been the blue. I do like the moss as well, but I feel like that blue, especially for filming purposes, just give you a very um, good look and it's very easy to pick up on some of the contrast with that. So that is under your color scheme, under color gain. And now this is one that I feel like makes a pretty big impact depending on what you're doing. Right now you can see mine is at 90%. I really do like to have that up a little higher. Sometimes I'll even have it up as high as 100%. And I'll show, kind of show you what that looks like when you're up at 100%. That gives you, just kind of fills everything out. It takes a little while to get used to because then everything looks a little bit bigger, especially in shallower water. So I might bump that down a little bit in shallower water. But a thing that I like is that it gives you more information. Um, you have to do a little more differentiating on what's down there. But when you go down, you can see everything just gets to be a little bit less, a little bit tougher to see. So again, for my purposes and for filming purposes, just makes it a lot easier for you to see on the camera and honestly just for myself to see as well. So I like to have my color gain up high. A lot of times I will have it up to 90% or even 100%. The other thing that you're seeing on the screen right now is the underwater camera, that little bit bigger mark. I haven't taken that out yet. So just for a little bit of size reference, the one that I'm moving right now that I'm jigging is a spoon. The one a little bit more to the right that that fish is going at right now is a small tungsten jig and then uh, you can see that one on the far left is the underwater camera, which is obviously the biggest thing that's showing up down there. Again, you can see some of that, some of those panfish or ciscos moving through another fish moving on bottom right there. But as the night goes on, sometimes it gets a little bit more fuzz on the screen. And so I will sometimes drop my gain down during that as well. So going back to your features, your sonar setup, we were just under appearance. And we were talking about color gain. Again, I like to keep color gain fairly high. So that way it just gives me as much picture as I can. And then I can differentiate what's going on from their color limit. This one, I keep right around either zero to 30%. You can see it doesn't have a huge difference right now from zero to 30, but as you go up to 100% limiting that color, then uh, that's where it makes the biggest difference. But I'll keep it zero to 30%, it's kind of depending on what I'm using. 20 is kind of a good average for me as well. Moving on to trails, again, what the trails does is it just leaves a trail of where your jig has been or where the fish have been to kind of give you the direction. You can choose how slow or fast they go away. I don't like to use this, some people do. You can just barely see it right there as it kind of trails through. If I go slow, you can see it a lot more. Um, again, I don't really like to use that. Sometimes it's nice to tell the direction of the fish, but I can usually tell fairly easily without the trail. So that is that bottom fill just shows the bottom. If it has a little bit more density, then it will show that sometimes if you're even around trees or logs, it will show. Um, I don't like the bottom fill because it just adds some more clutter on there that I don't want to see. So I usually have that off, but especially if you're just starting out with that, it can be helpful to kind of give you an idea of where that bottom is and kind of differentiate between your jig, fish, all of that. When I go back to some of the sonar setup, go to layout, Grid overlay, that's if you want that grid on or off. I keep it off because you can still see the numbers on the top and on the side, and you can really tell distances still without having some of that extra clutter on the screen. And again, for filming purposes, it just gives a much more clear picture for you to see when I am filming. Um, scroll history, I hide that. Beam icon north up. There you can see it just turned to the after dark mode. Um, so this will actually be good to be able to show you a little bit of both. You got to see it now before after dark or before that dark mode. And here it is during kind of that after dark period. Um, gives you a little bit more clutter sometimes. So again, I'll bump that gain back a little bit as I see that starting to clutter up a little bit more. As I go through here, um, we are back into our sonar setup. 
Now we're back into layout, going through some of these on-screen controls, on or off. I usually have that showing because I like to see those on-screen controls. Reverse range. Now this is something that I don't change a lot. I kind of um, like it where I have it right now. You can see minimum. So if you don't wanna see a lot behind you, keep it at minimum. If you go to default, that's kind of that medium one. And when you go to full, that really shows you all the way back. Sometimes I will move it down to full, but for the most part, I keep it into default. Um, I don't like to have it in hide or minimum because especially ice fishing, you get to see a lot of what's behind. And for example, right now I have my holes drilled kind of next to each other like that. And so being able to see both hooks, depending on where they're at and having my live scope transducer set in between my two holes, I'm able to see my hook that's farther back. So I'm gonna go back to default there. Sometimes, like I said, I will even do full and it really gives me a much more clear picture of what I've got going on. But then you have less screen space to view some of the forward mode. Moving on to compress range, I normally have that off. You can see what happens when it goes on and off. Not a huge difference um, in that respect. Going back into our sonar setup. Um, that has covered most of our layout. We go into noise reject. I like to keep noise reject on high. I'll show you what it is like when it's on medium. And when it's on low, it gives you just a lot more stuff on the screen, which is something that I usually like. But for the noise reject, it seems to kind of offset some of that color gain that I like to do. So I usually like to keep that on high um, to kind of reduce some of that extra stuff that's in the background. It doesn't seem to give me a lot of usable information. It just seems to clutter the screen a little bit more. So I keep my noise reject on high. As I was editing this video, I realized that I completely skipped over TVG, which is time variable gain. And essentially what that does, it's a filter for the top half, top part of the water column, and it filters out some of the noise, it filters out some of the clutter that you're gonna see up there. Most of the time, if you're not fishing in super deep water, you're gonna have this off. And in fact, for the majority of the time, I do have it off. One situation that I will turn on low or medium sometimes is lake trout fishing. When I know I'm fishing 60, 80, 100 feet, and I'm not too worried about what's happening in the top 10, 20 feet of the water column. That is sometimes when I'll turn that TVG on to low or medium. But for the vast majority of what I do, I keep TVG off. Ghost reject, I typically keep that one on auto. Um, I have messed around with it a little bit, moved it on to high or even to low, um, but I have found to be some of the most successful, especially move from lake to lake on auto. When you go to overlay data, that's really just what you wanna see. Right now, I just keep my time of day on there. For ice fishing, I don't need to know the water temp, but I will do the water temp when I'm in the summertime. Uh, speed, obviously don't need to know that. Depth, I do keep the depth on there, and the voltage I don't have on there because I have it on my Arc Lab shuttle. It has a little voltage reader on it. So just having less stuff on the screen is nice. I'll show you if I put all those on, kind of just clutters that up a little bit more. And when you're in shallower water, then that can actually take up some of your usable space or if you're in down mode. So I only like to keep the depth and the time of day on there. But again, that's one of the things that is your preference. Going into installation, I do like to use the AHRS. I keep that on. Calibrating compass. Now that is something that I have found can be very beneficial, especially in the summertime, just to help with kind of leveling where that live scope is facing, get you into forward mode, getting it pointed in the right direction. Um, I don't do it a lot in the winter, but I will do it every once in a while when I am in the open water in the boat, because it does seem to help get a little bit better picture and especially with leveling. So that is for calibrating the compass. I'm not gonna talk a lot about that right now, but that is something to look into where you essentially just do a couple loops to help that compass um, orient where it's supposed to be facing. Going on to focus, I have it on auto fresh and obviously restoring the sonar defaults. We do not wanna do that right now. But it is a good reference size because likely those are some pretty small walleyes that we're seeing down there, um, but you can still see them fairly easily. And if I wanted to zoom in, you can really get a pretty good picture of what's going on. If you really wanna get that bottom zoom, say if you're fishing walleye, something like that, just gives you a little bit better zoomed in picture so you can see exactly what's going on down there. Um, I usually don't need to do that. Sometimes I'll do it when I'm filming to get a little better shot. But overall, you can see with these settings, even those smaller walleyes and 25 feet of water are showing up pretty good. You can easily distinguish what they are, which way they're moving, how they're interacting with your jig, all of that. Like I said, my dead stick rod right now, you can see it more so flickering in and out. And that's because that's where that stitching is. I could move it into down mode. And actually I'll show you that here. When I move it into down mode menu, so in our setup, the installation, orientation, you go into down. 
So there you can see both jigs a little easier. I moved that orientation of that transducer um, level for the LVS 34. That's the down mode for it. And you can see both jigs much easier now. So for filming purposes, you know, I'm not moving around. I'm not kind of running and gunning. This is probably the best view to see a lot of what I'm looking to see. Ooh, that one's coming in. So keep an eye on that. If you're having a tough time seeing one of your jigs, you might want to go into a different orientation, whether that be forward or down, depending on what you're in. And that might help you get that jig out of the dead zone, just like it did my jig right here. You can see it much easier than when it was in forward mode. I'm gonna go through just a few general rules of thumb that I have seemed to be helpful depending on the body of water. Uh, no way are these hard and fast rules because it can vary so much depending on the body of water that you're in. Um, but one of those, and this is mostly related to your gain, um, the deeper you are, the higher the gain. The clearer the water, the higher the gain you can get away with. If it's murkier water, lower your gain. And if it's shallower water, lower that gain. Uh, so those are just a few rules of thumb that I do when I'm moving from body to water, body of water to body of water. Each lake is so very different and some of this is just preference depending on how you like to see it. But this should give you a pretty good place to start either if you just got live scope or if you're upgrading to LVS 34 from the LVS 32. Um, again, similar settings to what my LVS 32 was, but I was getting a lot of requests to give a new settings video. But I want to show you a few things that I've changed from the LVS 32 to the LVS 34. But I hope that hit most of what you're looking for should give you a very good place to start. If I did miss anything or you have any other questions, please leave those in the comments below. I try my best to read through all the comments and ask, answer any questions um, because I know I find so much value in that myself. So if you have any questions, leave those in the comments. I'll do my best to either cover them in a video or respond to them in the comments specifically. Also, I don't know if I even mentioned this. I uh, didn't really do an intro because I wanted to get right into the settings because that is what you're here for. My name is TJ Erickson. I am a teacher and a fishing guide based out of Park Rapids, Minnesota. I appreciate you stopping by. I'm able to film quite a few ice fishing videos. Um, I don't get to do a lot in the summer because my guide schedule gets so busy, uh, but I really enjoy making these videos, watching them back for myself, but also trying to help educate just a little bit because I know I found so much education here on YouTube and I just really want to give back and be able to document some of my experience. So thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate it.